Hey, check out this breakout game. We're going to learn how to program this in JavaScript, and it's really not that hard. So if you don't know any JavaScript, but you're familiar with some other programming language, just follow along. I think it'll be easy enough for you to figure out. We're going to go step by step. We're going to go through like nine different iterations, and I'll show you how, to, how the code works, how to write the code. All the code's available for download, so you might want to do that early. Um, but I'll post a link to my GitHub page. You can download all the code. And we're going to run this code online on a website called JS Fiddle. You don't need to set up an account or anything there. You can just go there and post the code there and run this in a browser on the JS Fiddle website. And then if you want to, like I've done here, you can run it as a GitHub page, as a GitHub server page. So I've done, I'll show you how to do that too at the very end. So let's get out of this and get into it. So here is the JS Fiddle site. We have little windows here where we can post in our HTML. You can paste in some CSS, some style sheet, and then the JavaScript. Now pretty much all of our code is going to be JavaScript. I'm going to bump this way up. We're going to have one line of HTML and one line of CSS. And then here we're going to see our output in this white window down here. So let's take a look at our code. We have one line of HTML as promised. We're just going to paste that in. Here's our one line of HTML, boom, done. And all that does is basically creates a canvas for us to write objects to. So we get a, a 600 wide by 400 pixels high canvas to write stuff to. And then there's a little bit of CSS. We're not gonna grab the style tags, we're just gonna grab this little canvas with the brackets. And all this is doing is setting a background color for us. It's gonna be like a light blue background color, okay? Now we have a run button here that you may not be able to see in my recording, but when I click run, oh, now we get our light blue background. So that's cool. Now we're going to dig into the JavaScript. This calls our script. So if you're running this on a server page, this is what it's going to look like. But if we're running this in JS Fiddle, uh, we're not going to use this line here. Instead, we're going to jump straight into Breakout 1, the first version or the first iteration of our nine iterations of this game. So, like I said, if you don't know JavaScript, don't worry. This is going to be a great way to learn it because you can, you can see what's going on in the program if you're familiar with programming in general. And it'll be easy enough to, to see what each variable does, and you'll be able to learn JavaScript this way. So it's a great, great tutorial. So, we, first we have a Canvas object in JavaScript that enables us to edit elements on the canvas. And so we're going to basically get element by ID, my canvas. That was our JavaScript. It's called my canvas. See, canvas ID equals my canvas. So now what we're doing is basically grabbing a handle on this HTML object, the canvas, so that we can write objects to it through JavaScript. So that's a reference or a handle on the canvas. And then here we're saying we're going to use a 2D mode, get context 2D, and we're going to call it CTX instead of canvas. So the rest of this program is everything is CTX is referring to the canvas. Now we have another variable called ball radius 12, that's 12 pixel ball radius. We're going to have X and Y coordinates for the location of our ball. And we're going to start out by just setting those equal to the ball radius 12. So it'll be basically the top left corner because the, the Top left corner of our screen, let me flip back here. This top left corner of our screen is the zero, zero pixel point. And then it counts X to the right and Y down. Okay, so 12, 12 point is gonna be like right around here. In other words, every time the ball is gonna start in the top left corner, that's just where we're gonna start for right now. So we set X and Y initially equal to the ball radius. And then dx and dy is the change in x and the change in y. It's delta x, delta y. And we want them to, each frame, to x to move 2 and y to move down 2. So 2 to the right and uh, down 2. Actually, that's up 2. We can change that to a positive 2. Then it'll go down 2. Um, so now what else? We have a function to draw the ball. Okay, what's involved in that? Five lines of code. Here's our canvas object. We're going to start a path. In other words, we're going to use a begin path every time we draw a shape. And this shape is going to be an arc. So ctx.arc. And then we pass in the location. 
x and y coordinates of where we want this to be, and then the radius of the circle. And then um, this is the starting point, uh, and this is the number of uh, radians in rotation. So two pi rotations, which is a full circle, and starting from the zero point. So that basically is drawing the circle. And then we're going to fill the circle in solid red, FF0000. It's just a hex value for red, fill style. And then this does the fill command. And then we close the path. So that's it. These five lines are drawing the ball. It's a stationary ball. It's not moving yet. But each frame, we're going to advance it two pixels. And then we're going to redraw it. So our draw function is you'll see in a few minutes, it's gonna call other functions, draw ball, draw paddle, and draw, draw bricks and other stuff. But right now, we're just gonna start out by the draw function clearing our canvas, everything from the top left corner to the bottom right corner. Canvas width and canvas height is the bottom right corner. So everything from the top left corner to the bottom right corner, we want it cleared. So ctx.clear rectangle. And then draw ball. And then we're going to adjust um, x and y by the, the dx, the delta values, which is two pixels. We're going to add two pixels to those. And then this little line starts everything moving. It says, call this draw function every 10 milliseconds. Every 10 milliseconds, it's like an endless loop. This draw function is going to execute once every 10 milliseconds. So it's going to clear the rectangle, draw the ball, adjust the x and y values for the ball. And then it's going to wait 10 milliseconds. It's going to do it all again. So let's paste our current code into JS Fiddle and see how that works. We'll paste that right here. Boom. And now we'll hit the run button. And we can see the ball coming from our 12, 12 pixel point. Just zooming off to the right. If I hit run again, boom, it does it again. It doesn't know that it has to bounce off a wall yet. So, gee. Instead of it just disappearing off the screen, maybe we might want to make the ball bounce. So yeah, we've managed to draw a red ball and make it move across the screen. Uh, every 10 milliseconds, it moves two pixels. That's pretty cool. That wasn't that hard. So we did that with a pretty small amount of code. Let's look at JavaScript version 2. So in JavaScript version 2, we didn't add any new variables. We have the same variables here. Um, and then we have the draw ball function, which doesn't change. So I'm going to close that up. We have our draw function, where we basically we just added these two if statements. And what we're checking is if the x value gets either off the left side of the screen or off the right side of the screen, then we need to change the dx to uh, multiply it by negative 1, basically. Change it from negative to positive or positive to negative. So the ball changes direction. In other words, the ball is moving right, it goes off the right edge of the screen. We start subtracting two instead of adding two each, each frame. So then the ball starts moving left. So that's easy. So if x, or the x current position, x position of the ball, plus the little delta we're going to add to it, puts it off of the screen, canvas width minus ball radius, it puts it off the right edge of the screen, or if x plus dx is less than ball radius, in other words, if it's off the left edge of the screen, then we, we change dx to the negative value of dx, or multiply it by negative 1. And the same thing for y. If y goes off of the top of the screen, or y goes off the bottom of the screen, then we're going to multiply dy by a negative 1, so that it starts moving in the opposite direction. So that's really all we're changing in this iteration, this is JavaScript 2, makes the ball bounce, or it seems to bounce, because it doesn't go off the edge of the screen. So let's copy and paste that. We'll do Control A, Control V, paste that in, and then I'm going to click Run. Now there's our, there comes our ball. Yep, it works. So now the ball is just bouncing around the screen, and it doesn't go off the edge. Each time we reach the edge, dx value changes to a negative value. And the same thing with the top edge, it changes a dy to a negative. Pretty cool, huh? All right, and we can also change the ball radius if you want. You can change the ball color. These things are all easy to do. Uh, ball radius is just a variable in top. The ball color is this FF 
Next, we want to draw a paddle so that we can actually bump the ball, control, uh, make the ball bounce back into play. So let's take a look at that. We need a paddle height, 100, 100 pixels, and a paddle width of 12. So it's going to be tall and, and narrow. And our x value for the paddle, well, it's going to be right on this edge. So x is always going to be 0 for the paddle. But the y value, since it goes up and down, is going to range between 0 and 400, the size of our canvas. So we're going to start out with the paddle x is, is 0, but the paddle y is going to be equal to canvas height minus paddle width divided by 2. In other words, it puts it right in the middle of the canvas vertically. And then we're going to use this variable called down pressed that tells us, yeah, the down arrow is currently being pressed. And up pressed, yeah, the up arrow is currently being pressed. And then we have a handler for a key down or the key is let up. Okay, don't confuse this with the down key. This is just a key is being pressed. A key pressed handler and a key unpressed handler. This receives an event, E is an event. If the event.key is down or event.key is arrow down, there's two different names depending on which browser, so we gotta check for both of those, down or arrow down, then down press variable becomes true. Yeah, somebody's pressing on the down key, right? Or if the key is up, in other words, the up key is being pressed, then up pressed equals true. And then we do the same thing for the key up handler. In other words, someone lets go of the key. The key goes up. Down press becomes false if someone lets off of that key. And if someone lets go of the up key, then up press turns false. So this just basically toggles these two functions will toggle the down pressed and up pressed variables between true and false, depending on whether the key is being pressed or let up. That's all that code does. Um, let me close these up. Okay. Now our draw ball function doesn't change, but we need a draw paddle function. It's not a whole lot different from the draw ball function. We're going to draw the paddle once each frame, and we're going to use the CTX, which is our canvas, begin path. The CTX is going to be a rect instead of an arc. And it's going to start at x is 0, right, which is the left edge of the screen, and whatever that paddle y value is. Initially, it's going to start at the middle of the screen vertically, but it's going to be adjusted as we move the arrow keys. And then the paddle width and paddle height we have to pass in. So that's the size, the dimensions of our square, our rectangle. And then uh, the fill color is just going to be a dark gray. Go ahead and fill that in and close the path up. So that draws our paddle. And then we're going to come down here and we really just need to, in our draw function, which is going to execute once every single frame this happens, we're going to clear our whole screen, we're going to draw the ball, and now we're going to draw the paddle. So look, we have the same two if statements to check the, um, the ball going off the screen to make it bounce, but we've added two additional if statements. So if down pressed and paddle y is less than the canvas height minus the paddle height, then paddle y plus equals 4. And if up pressed and paddle y is greater than 4, then paddle y minus equals 4. So in other words, if you're pressing that up arrow, we want to make the paddle move up. And if you're pressing the down arrow, you make the paddle move down. And we do that just using this paddle Y position. That's our location, the vertical location of the paddle. So we're adjusting that by four pixels each time someone presses. It can move four pixels in a frame each time someone presses the up or down arrow. So that's it. And then we also need to add these uh, event listener in here. This basically just says, hey, we have a down key and an up key event listener. So let's grab this code and let's paste it in and see how it works. Control C, we'll flip back here, Control V, oops, Control A, Control V, boom. It's in, okay, and then we'll run it. Now look, nothing happens until I click in the box, but now I can, okay. So we can click in the box and then we can move the paddle up and down. 
but we didn't actually make the paddle check for the ball or anything. So the ball can still, it's still going to stay on the screen no matter what. So the next thing we might want to do is, well, you can lose. If your paddle isn't there to block the ball, then the ball goes straight past. That's probably the next thing we want to do. But we do have a paddle that moves up and down. The action listener works. The arrow keys work. Okay, pretty slick. Not bad. Three iterations, we got that far. So the next thing we want to do is check this ball on the back screen to see if it's go if the paddle is there or not to reflect it. 